And I'm going to introduce now the next speaker, I understand, the Secretary of Agriculture. And I have to tell you a little secret about the Secretary of Agriculture. I know none of this will get out of here. I am amazed that he is here. Uh, he's, we have not had as fine a Secretary of Agriculture ever in Vermont. I'll acknowledge that. I'll acknowledge the fact that Governor Shumlin knew that one of the most important things he would do is to name a Secretary of Agriculture, and he picked the best person in the state. I'll acknowledge that. I'll acknowledge the fact that he's had experience for years and years, both in farming and elsewhere, and is one of the most progressive thinkers in the state. I'll acknowledge that. But yesterday was his birthday. And Chuck Ross had to hear me and a small group at a family dinner sing happy birthday to him. If you've ever heard my voice singing, you would never want to show up in the same room with me again. So I think it just speaks to the courage of this wonderfully talented, great Secretary of Agriculture, Chuck Ross. Well, it's a good thing the uh, emergency room is so close to the uh, Davis Hall, because I just came from there. I got my hearing repaired this morning. Um, uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and I just want to take a minute to recognize our congressional delegation, of which I'm sandwiched between two of the three of them. Um, I had the privilege of working with Senator Leahy for 16 years. Um, part of that time, I, had to, um, I also worked um, as a staff member with uh, Congressman Welch's staff and uh, Senator Sanders' staff. And now as Secretary of Agriculture, I get to work with all three staffs on the issues that I hold dear, and those are the issues of agriculture and our food systems in the state of Vermont. On those issues in particular, but on many other issues that are important to the state of Vermont, you could not find be a better delegation than the ones we have in Washington representing us. And I want to thank them publicly for all they do. The other person I want to thank is Enid Wanakut. Where are you, Enid? Um, uh, if you haven't been lucky enough to be hugged by Enid, you haven't lived yet. Um, there are no hugs that are any more meaningful um, or more genuine than those that uh, Enid provides. And, uh, and there's no one who works any harder on behalf of organic agriculture, agriculture in the state of Vermont than Enid. And uh, she deserves all the accolades she gets, and I'm pleased to have a chance to give her one more. So thank you for all you do, Enid. So the NOFA staff and Enid have put on quite a show. This now is the biggest agriculture organization or conference in the state of Vermont. That says something. So, I, as a Secretary of Agriculture, couldn't be happier to be in this position right now because I get to work with people like Enid and people like you. Um, we have an incredibly great future in front of us that's built upon the work many of you have been doing for decades in this state. The Agency of Agriculture, and I'm an evangelical on this particular point, I am trying to make it clear what it is we do in the Agency of Agriculture, so let me tell you what our mission statement is. It is to facilitate, it is to support, and it is to encourage the growth and the viability of agriculture in the state of Vermont. We're going to work with you to make sure we work and protect our working landscape, our human, animal, and plant health, provide the consumers the products they want and deserve, and protect our environment at the same time. That's what we do in the Agency of Agriculture. Now, we couldn't do that if we didn't have partners, and one of those partners clearly is you as the producers, your organization as NOFA, and we share many, many goals with this organization and with all of you. We have deep connections with NOFA. We have an ag development team um, uh, that many of them are here today. I saw Abby, Chelsea, Coy. Are there any other ag dev crew here? There's about, well, there's more than I can keep track of in the agency. And they are all plugged in to NOFA and work in partnership with NOFA. 
We're pleased, I'm pleased to be able to have that kind of interface because NOFA is making things happen. You're changing the face of agriculture, the face of our communities in the state of Vermont every day. Now, this theme of this conference is innovations. Generations of innovation. And let's just take a look back. Vermont agriculture started with potash when we first started cutting trees down up here. But we've done a lot more. We've done the Morgan horse. We've had John Deere. We have had things, innovations like farm to plate, where we start with 1,200 volunteers, that'd be you, who have now built a formal network that set out goals that we are working to accomplish. We have started the evolution and are leading the evolution on how to do food hubs in the state of Vermont. We have led on the direct marketing with CSAs and many other ways. We are building an educational network, and I see some educational leaders here, I think I just saw Doug Long Tang, building an educational network that is going to help create the future for agriculture and create the new leaders and the producers that we all are going to depend upon. And you folks here, as organic farmers, have probably started one of the most important innovations, and that is working with Senator Leahy to build upon your innovations as producers that have created the national standards for organics that now the country depends upon. And it started here with you in the state of Vermont. We now have Gene Richardson appointed the National Organic Standards Board. We have the Organic Food Protection Act, which was part of the 1990 Farm Bill, thanks to all of you. And we now have the Organic Trade Association, Association that has relocated to where? To Brattleboro, Vermont. That is because of you. So I want to just tell you a little bit about, a little bit more about Vermont agriculture and what I've experienced. And when I've, I want to tell you a story. When I went out to Missouri to talk about water quality issues in Kansas City, I got off the stage and not, I had about five people rapidly walk up to me. And they didn't want to talk about water quality. They wanted to talk about what's happening in Vermont. What is happening at a community level in the state of Vermont because they want to replicate what it is you all are doing every day in the state of Vermont, building economies, agriculture economies that support our communities. They want to know how Vermont is doing that because you folks are leading the way. And the critical component here is community. You folks are a community, you are a part of our communities, and we have, in my view, the lead on community-based agriculture. It's what makes farming possible and great and rewarding. It's what makes living in Vermont wonderful. It's the reason why my boss, Governor Shumlin, says Vermont is a great place to live, work, and raise a family. And that's because you folks are enriching our community with the work you do, building a community with our agriculture economy. We're deeply connected to our communities. We are in our schools with programs like Farm to School. We are embracing our environment, trying to be on the cutting edge and dealing with issues of water quality, which are one of our great threats here to agriculture in the state. We are building on the working landscape with the Working Landscape Enterprise uh, Board, which many of you have supported. And our agriculture economy is growing. We're at least 10% of the GDP, if you will, of the state of Vermont, and quite frankly, I believe it's significantly more. You folks are vital, incredibly important part of what makes Vermont a special place to live and work. And these are the kind of goals we share with NOFA. And let me tell you how the state of Vermont is leading, because this is the reason why I'm proud to represent you when I go out of state. It's why I'm proud to work with you. We are one of the top artisanal cheese regions in the world, in the world. Quebec, France, Vermont, that's us. We're in that group, folks. You sell cheese to France now. Think about that. We are the number one producer in the United States of maple syrup, our marquee specialty value crop. Everybody knows Vermont through its cheese and its maple syrup. We are number one in direct marketing because of our farmers markets, our CSAs, and our farm stands. Those are the things you folks do. We are number one when it comes to farm to school. The USDA comes to Vermont to look at our model as an example for the rest of the country. We are a leader when it comes to farm to institution. Just a, I just left the hospital to get my hearing fixed, remember? That's the hospital that's one of the top two healthcare organizations 
in the country in terms of sourcing food locally. That's our health care system. That's number two, one or two in the country. We have started a conversation with Sodexo that provides 34,000 meals a day in the state of Vermont, that provides meals in this university, and we're working with them to help them learn how to be a multinational corporation that knows how to source locally. As I said, you folks are leading the way in the evolution and the ever-changing um, profile of food hubs. We are leaders in biodigesting in the state of Vermont, number one per capita, leading in some of the evolutionary research right here at the University of Vermont. We are a leader when it comes to farmland conservation. We are a top dairy producer in the state of Vermont. All this makes us the leader in community-based agriculture. That's why people talk to me in Kansas City, Missouri, about what's going on in the state of Vermont, because we are leading. The USDA comes to look at us because of our farm to school program, because our uh, food hubs, because our number one in direct marketing, because we are trying to be on the cutting edge of water quality. We're building the Vermont economy, we're building the Vermont community, we're building the brand that makes this place so special and helps you sell your products. We're working doing this all together. Our challenge, and my challenge to all of you, is to continue to work together. I just left the St. Albans Dairy Co-op annual meeting, and I've challenged them with the same thing. It's easy at times to fall on either side of the various divisions within agriculture, whether it's conventional versus organic, whether it's dairy versus non-dairy, whether it's value-added versus raw production. We cannot afford to let those divisions divide us. We need everybody in the game in the state of Vermont if we're going to advance agriculture and support the communities that we need and want. That's challenge one. Challenge two, and this is the one that I actually am most passionate about, we all have to put our shoulder to the wheel to address the issue of agricultural literacy. All of you in this room understand agriculture. You understand where milk comes from, you understand how egg is produced, you understand what it means to raise a beef and turn it into a piece of meat that goes on your plate. All of you understand that and you talk to each other. All of you need to put your shoulder to the wheel to help get everybody outside this room to understand what you understand in this room. When I am confronted and when you are confronted with situations that we saw at Green Mountain College with Bill and Lou, the oxen too, and whether or not they can be slaughtered and whether they're gonna be dictated to by someone that does not own Bill and Lou, that tells me there is a gap in the understanding of what it means to produce agriculture products. We need to educate one another on that. When we and I have to deal with consumers who look at a manure spreader going down the road and see it as a conveyor of pollution rather than a recycler of nutrients, we have a fundamental problem. When children sit in their school and they don't know where a gallon of milk comes from, they don't know what's involved in raising a head of lettuce, we have a problem. It's called agricultural literacy. That's a problem we all need to engage. We all need to push on. And I know you folks are doing the work because you are building the food hubs, you're doing the CSAs, you're doing the farm to institution, you're converting people every day, educating them every day. That is our challenge. I thank you for the work you do. I thank you for building the community that we get to live in. Yeah.